Hi there to you. It's really great to see you. And I'm really excited actually, because today's the day that I'm going through my pickups video. Now, this is something that you might have seen over on other channels. I don't tend to do it too much. It does feel a little bit like, look at me, look at all the goodies I've got. But I'm really excited with some of the models that I picked up at Alexandra Palace, the British Festival of Railway Modelling. There were so many traders in attendance that I was like a kid in a candy store in there for me and a lot of other people too. Certainly on the Saturday, I've never seen it so busy and you really did need sharp elbows to get yourself around that hall. But I did manage to pick up a whole host of different bits and pieces. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some of the items that I've bought and tell you a little bit about them. So come with me. In association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts and with additional support from KR Models, daring to build the models that you want to see on your layout. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at the goodies. Alexandra Palace was absolutely a wealth of stands selling all manner of new and old model railway items. There was a lot of second hand and a lot of brand new stuff. So I'm going to share with you some of my pickups. And one of the last places I went to is going to be the first item that I show you. I managed to pick up a J72 tank from the Backman Collectors Club, of which I am a member. And this is in the really, really quite pretty livery of the preserved example. This in turn was modelled on the station pilots that roamed around Newcastle Central Station. And it was a tradition that went all the way back to the Northeastern Railway period when these locomotives were still turned out in the Northeastern Railway Green. And this particular example here is shown in just such a livery with the Northeastern Railway Crest, plus the BR Later Ferret and Dartboard Crest on there. We've also got these silver rods, and they're really nicely done, including all of the uh, connections there. There's no shiny bare metal uh, nuts. It's really quite well done. Now I already have one of the all new J72s from Backman. I actually got it in its Northeastern Railway guys in a very similar livery. But uh, it's one that I've been looking at longingly in the Collectors Club pages. And I thought, well, it's about time I really plucked up the courage and bought one. So I did. Comparing it to my existing model, it's actually a little bit darker green, but that's perfectly acceptable. And I'm really looking forward to getting this locomotive up and running on DC here on Weir Yard. And certainly I've uh, got no buyer's regrets about picking this up. If you are a member of the Collectors Club, it's certainly one well worth taking a look at. And actually, given the way that prices have gone up, the price that these were originally put out at it's actually quite competitive compared with what you would expect from a six coupled locomotive now. So well worth investing in. Going right back to my initial purchase when I got to the show. And this was this Hornby brake van from the rails stand, second hand, but mint in box. Now, as you well know, I really do love my brake vans. And this was a livery of the much more modern release of the Hornby brake van that I really couldn't pass up because I didn't already have it. So I bagged and tagged this on the Friday, even before the punters came through. And it is one of the perks of getting into these shows early with a layout that uh, you can have a quick look around and just spot anything that you really do fancy. Also, whilst I was at the rail stand, I uh, did pick up a whole bunch of the newly released VEA wagons from Backman. And with these, I've gone for the tops numbered versions. So there are more versions that are out, but I chose these four. 
So we've got the VEA in the rail freight livery with the grey roof. I wasn't really sold on the red roof version that is available, but may yet pick it up depending on how I feel later on. The plain rail freight, freight brown, uh, as, again, as the VEA. The rail freight distribution, uh, the later livery with the full yellow ends. And these are how I remember them. Still knocking about, looking really down at heel and uh, on Ministry of Defence work. Uh, and it's just something that whilst it's probably a little bit on the modern side for what I do model, I do like this livery nonetheless. And the last example is the only uh, tops version released thus far of the Van Wide with its original vacuum brake chassis. The factory weathering on this really is nice, so much so I'm going to give you a quick look of this, but I am going to have a full review video of the VEA uh, at some point in the near future, so do stay tuned for that and you'll be able to see the full glory of these models, but if you look at that it really is a lovely weathering job that Bachman have applied and certainly it's becoming the hallmark of Bachman that they really can do weathering exceptionally well from the factory. So really looking forward to doing the full review of these wagons. Staying with Bachman factory weathering I couldn't resist these from the Kernow Model Rail Centre stand. These are a triple pack of factory weathered 16 ton mineral wagons that Bankman have had on the market for quite some time, but resplendent here in certainly the best BR Borksite weathered livery that I have seen ready to run. And they were well worth every penny, even though some people might say that uh, just a penny under £60 is quite expensive for three 16 ton mineral wagons. But Again, there's no buyer's remorse yet, and I'm really pleased with these. There's the catalogue number if you want to hunt them out, 37-238Z. And certainly from when I first saw photos of these uh, done by Chris Navard online, I really thought that this was one that I should be picking up. And the opportunity presented itself at Ali Pali, so really, how could I say no? Also from the KMRC stand, I picked up this little beauty, the Queen Mary brake van, but in its electrification livery. Again, another special commission from Backman. They've had these in stock for quite some time. Uh, they have two different versions of the Queen Mary that they commissioned around about the same time. Now, I do have the other version in the two-tone green. It's sort of an olive green with a much lighter green around the top of the cabin. But this particular one I'd never got round to at the time. So it's here 33-825Y Queen Mary brake van uh, with the electrification branding. Judging by the fact that I got the one with the price tag as opposed to the ones that were all wrapped up in the tissue paper, I think it's quite possible that I may have ended up with the last of these from Kernow Model Rail Centre, or at least certainly the last of the ones that they brought with them to the show. One of the jobs that Zoe tasked me to do was to pick up my own birthday present. And I had a budget and this wagon fell really neatly in that from the TMC stand. Again, this is a brand new model and it's been out some time. Commissioned by TMC, there's a whole range of these 22 ton plate wagons that they've done. But this particular one has eluded me for quite some time. And uh, I was really pleased to remember to ask about it when I was at Ali Pali. 38-851Z. And this is in the rather unique reach wagon livery. Now, these were used in places where the locomotive couldn't venture to where it was trying to spot the wagons. So they used some of these redundant wagons to just distance the locomotive from the wagons that they were trying to shunt. Places where this could apply could be as simple as coal drops, where if a locomotive ventured onto them, it would crash straight through. Or alternatively, in uh, petroleum terminals where the locomotive wasn't allowed into the site. So a reach wagon, or indeed several of these wagons, could be used to spot the tanker cars without the locomotive venturing beyond the gate. 
They could also be used in places where inset track went inside factory warehouses and perhaps the concrete floor wasn't up to supporting the very heavy weight of the locomotive or indeed they didn't want the diesel exhaust of that locomotive swamping the building and setting off fire alarms so again a reach wagon could be used in those circumstances. It was a really good price and I couldn't help but pick it up and certainly this is a superb present from the cupboard monkey that I was really really happy to pick up at Alexandra Palace. It wasn't just rolling stock and locomotives I was picking up and I was really happy to take a trip over to the War World Scenics stand and pick up some supplies. I've got here their D-Baller which is a pretty much essential tool if you use any of the longer static grass. You'll find it in the hopper of the static grass applicator it has an annoying habit of working into these sort of like hairballs and it does impinge being able to apply that to your model. Normally I would sit and pull these apart by hand, but War World Scenics have come out with a really great piece of equipment here that just allows you to practically just sieve those balls away into something like an ice cream container and uh, it allows you to return those horrible hair balls into perfectly free-running usable static grass so it's certainly a perfect tool for anybody who does a lot of static grass application such as myself. I did also pick up a host of different static grasses and also I picked up one of my favorite products the forest ground cover which is a really really great product for not just giving you the color and the detritus of underneath trees and bushes but the texture too and also the essential static grass layering spray it's always great to get another can of this I do go through so much and it is such a great adhesive for doing the static grass work so I've got a full can here and I'm going to be using this in an upcoming project also at the War World Scenic stand they very very kindly gave me one of their burnt tree kits this is a new product that they launched at the show that gives you the opportunity to do the best of both worlds using seagrass and also the plastic armatures and by trimming off the plastic branches you can use the trunk and glue to it pieces of the sea foam to make up a super realistic tree and I'm really looking forward to trying this out as part of a future video that I'm doing for Model Railroad Hobbyist. I did also find time to pop into DCC concept stand and it's always good to pick up those little bits and pieces that are so easy to forget when you're placing a larger order and perhaps it's a case that they don't justify the cost of postage when you only want the one item. All through my soldering videos that I did for Model Railroad Hobbyist I couldn't help but thinking that I was missing a key piece of tooling and that was the fiberglass brush. Now I did manage without but certainly for some time now I've thought that really I could do with one of these and the Alexandra Palace show was an ideal opportunity to pick one up. Visiting the Ekon stand I came away with some of their non-toxic weathering powders. Now it's a little known fact that a lot of weathering powders are made from some somewhat unpleasant materials. Now they're not food, you're not supposed to eat them but the fact is that these are completely non-toxic so they're ideal for letting a younger child take their first steps towards weathering models without any risk of worrying of what happens if you do eat a spoonful of chromium oxide. Spoiler for you, it's really not good for you but all of these are completely non-toxic they're also water soluble and another thing as well I was told about them is they're non-abrasive too and that means if you weather locomotives and some of the dust gets into the mechanism you don't have to worry about it becoming a kind of grinding paste destroying the mechanism of the locomotive so I'm really looking forward to trying these out. Heading over to the Gauge Master stand there was an awful lot of products from Knock on offer and I always do love these figures that they do. 
They're so imaginative and such a great range. And it was an ideal opportunity to see all the different versions that Gage Master have in stock. And these, the Ashen Poodle, was something that I really couldn't resist. It has to be said, there was quite a few others as well, which I really liked, but I did restrain myself. But this was an absolute must. I don't know exactly where I'm going to put them, but uh, certainly I think uh, I will definitely find some space, either on Weir Yard or Minnith Tatus, to really do these justice. For the last item, I've had to move the camera back somewhat, and that's because of the size. This is a Gronk from Daypole, the Class 8 shunter, but I was really taken by these. They had them on their stand at a really, really great price, and I've really, really been wanting to get one of these for, well, years, and now I do. Class 8 is one of my favourite shunting locomotives, and to get it in O-Gage is something that really I've wanted to do for so, so long. You can see here that it also comes factory weathered. But this isn't a blowover with an airbrush. Quite far from it. This is a super professional weathering job. And you can see that this looks like a dirty workaday locomotive that really has earned its keep. Sitting outside in all weathers, getting filthy but always being the locomotive that can be depended upon. The weight on this model is immense and it does include an awful lot of features. So I'm looking forward so much to having a really good play with this model. One of the things that Daypol also sent me away with just to have a go with is one of their Imperium 3 decoders. This is actually an eight function decoder. And I believe that this is something that we're gonna see more and more of as manufacturers embrace just what DCC can do. So this is the perfect decoder for this locomotive. With its sprung buffers, sprung loaded cab doors, and everything else that goes into making this a superb model, I'm really looking forward to getting this running on one of my O-gauge layouts. If not the garden layout, then well, I've got a small diorama layout which it can chug up and down on and be the perfect accompaniment to the VEA vans that Daypol sent for review some time ago. I almost forgot the hunt couplings here from West Hill Wagon Works. They very kindly gave me a set of these. They're intended for N-gauge, but they're perfect for 009. I was running Manith Tatis and having great difficulty with the standard 009 couplings that all of the Backman and Pico wagons come with. Quite frankly, these are so much better that I'm going to be converting all of my 009 stock and never looking back. I'd also like to give a mention to Train Tech and Gauge Master who passed over this for taking a closer look at. It's a buffer stop red light and I'm going to be fitting this as a little project somewhere on Weir Yard and seeing just how easy it is to fit it to a layout and how effective it will be in service. So that rounds up all of the items that I picked up at Alexandra Palace. It was a really, really good show with so much on offer. And there was also an awful lot of layouts too, which I did enjoy seeing the ones that I was able to get to, but Quite frankly, it was so, so busy and there were so many of you to talk to that uh, time just whizzed past and I had a great time. It was wonderful to meet so many of the Monday Clubbers in person and put faces to names. And I know that a lot of you guys also got some great pickups too. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this video and where applicable, we'll try and put a link down below that help you out to find some of the goodies that I found today. If they're a general stock item, just to help you find where you can get them from as well. I'd love to hear from you. Did you go to Ali Pali or did you go to another show that's been on over the last few weeks? Did you get yourself some really good bits and pieces? I'd love to hear from you. Do share your story in the comments down below. It's always great to hear about somebody who's tracked down something that they've been looking for for quite some time and then finally found just what they're looking for. Quite often, 
That's the joy of collecting, isn't it? It's the hunt that's the most important rather than the possession. And certainly it's something that I love doing at shows, rummaging through all of those trade stands just to see what's on offer. Don't forget as well that you can head on over to Patreon and help support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. And you can also become a channel member and be the first to see our Friday videos as one of the perks of channel membership. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. It's been really fun hanging out for this video. And until next time, you take great care. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. Additional support is also provided by KR Models, daring to build the models that you want to see on your layout. Check out their website today and see some of their award-winning models, as well as their forthcoming masterpieces in miniature. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Popper, Karen Nichol, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.